my friends welcome to my channel focusing free cat today i'll be modeling this flower bass and i will specially focus on how to inscript your name on the on the surface which is not a planar surface and then how to come up with this unique shape so these are the few things that i want to discuss in today's modeling and i'm thinking this will be a video for anybody who would want to build this model all by himself all and herself but like know very little about cat modeling so i will go pretty slow with with the target that you can start today on free cat but still can come up with this model and then 3d print it by yourself with that let's go ahead and start working on this today i'll be working on free cat version 1 release candidate 2 which has been released a couple of weeks ago what i want to do is i want to because this is I, i'm planning to do it in in the beginner level for anybody who starts up new i'll be working on part workbench which is kind of a little easier to understand compared with like you know with other cad softwares First of all, I want to go with the basics. So today we will be using this loft tool. So if, uh, as if you didn't know what the loft is, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I want to draw a sketch on say XY plane and I'm drawing a basic thing, very sm simple. And then let's not worry about the dimensions right now. So I got one sketch. And then I want to draw another sketch, but say some distance above this sketch. So 50 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and XY plane. I want to offset it by 50 millimeter positive direction on the Z. So if we are building that on XY plane, this offset is on the Z direction. If it was on XZ plane, this offset would be on the, on the direction that it's missing from that plane. So with that now, that's where my sketch will be so i want to come up with something different say a slot on the reverse direction and then so we have two sketches and if we want to blend these two surface these sketches into one model one object uh, that would be loft so we, what we do is we select loft and we select these two sketches and say create solid hit ok so that creates a solid in comparison these two sketches that we built so we can have multiple sketches if we have multiple sketches we'll have to select them in sequence and that's the difference only All right, so this is the lofting thing loft is kind of like in a simpler term it's kind of bending the surface so it's if you want to speak in avatar language it's surface bending Hi. so we now that we got through the basics i want to focus on this flower base what i i did in here so what i did i built a basic sketch at the bottom and then i rotated it at halfway through and enlarged it and then i brought the same sketch back in the, at the top and then lofted it so let's go ahead with that sketch so what on xy plane I want to start with my basic and that was a rectangle so for a rectangle I want to go with center rectangle and I can apply the dimensions right now let's say 100 by 100 millimeters so that's my first sketch now because we will be lofting in part workbench I don't want to do both sketches at the same time so i'll keep them separate what i mean by that is if you can as you can see there is a thickness between here so this is our one sketch this inside and this is outside is another sketch i want to keep them separate if it was in part design we could do it at the same time so on that sketch if you'll notice it has these corners in the hair 
and what I can do is I can actually go in the corner and say this is my that corner that we we kind of saw in that sketch and then I want to apply equality to all for this and say E for equality on the keyboard that equalizes everything and then how about a dimension so select any one of those and then hit D on the keyboard let's say 10 millimeter sounds good and now here you can see this is one area and there is another area that sketch is a very bad sketching so let's make that one individual oh right so we'll have to correct that one individual sketching so what i'm going to do is like i'm trimming this excess parts in here and then i think one line got deleted so i'm going to go ahead and make that line so now that i trimmed few things one of my constraints was this symmetry it's gone which is annoying so i'm gonna go ahead and apply that symmetry again s for symmetry and now this is thrown off guard so i'm gonna go ahead and make these two horizontal these two horizontal and this two will be vertical b for vertical and b for vertical all right now we can we have four degrees of freedom which is all right which is this so what we'll have to do is we'll have to place this point on this line which is c on the keyboard do the same thing on here it all these constraints were there when you draw the rectangle but they are gone because of the trimming i wish they stayed right, so i'm gonna go ahead and finish this part so that is our one of our sketches and then we can actually finish it up by introducing some smoothing curve here so that would be sketch fillet so let's do that and that actually takes out my constraints one more time so maybe i should have waited to apply the constraints for this at this step so i'm going to go ahead and apply an equality constraint on all these edges E on the keyboard and then say apply an arbitrary say five millimeter radius all right i got lucky everything's there so that is my first sketch right and i want to rename that sketch and say base and this is going to be my outer so out the inside sketch would be this thing but a little bit inside and this that will actually determine what this thickness of this wall will be so what i want to do i want to copy this and then paste it right and then rename that say sketch base in and then let's go ahead get in there by double clicking on it and then select everything so still you cannot do like double clicking on it it should like select all of this I guess it will come like in the future but for now let's go ahead and select all the edges manually I did actually open up a ticket or like issue uh, requesting this feature where we would double click within the area and then it will select all the edges surrounding it I'm sure they'll start working on it any day now all right, so we get all the edges selected and then I want to say offset geometry and i want to bring it in inside so that's too much maybe i want to make it what i did earlier is three millimeter so that is my wall thickness three millimeter but notice how this this sketch is not bound like you know that three millimeter is not applied it is applied it's here but the distance are not there so what we want to do we want to go ahead and fix all of these in places i may be maybe i want to delete these i don't want to keep them right now or i can keep them as construction geometry but i'm going to go ahead and delete all of these after we don't need that anymore all right delete 
on the keyboard now you can see it's not deleted you still can see that actually it's from the other sketch that's visible so don't worry about it but let's not worry about the constraints on this we are not touching these points they're there we are happy so we have two sketches one is here and another one is here so do we got two plus two four sketches done so this base uh, in and out will be on top as well so let's now that we have the thickness in there let's also decide on the height let's say i want to make it a 300 millimeter tall flower base so i want to copy both of these and say paste them and rename it both of these sketches should be at an offset of z of 100 millimeter so we can select both of these and placement and position in z we can say 100 actually that's not 100 we thought of 300s yeah that's tall enough all right now let's talk about the middle sketch i want to take this sketch base out and copy it and paste it and then let's say sketch mid out and let's go ahead and place it at an angle of say 45 right and then i'm going to say this z will be half of 300 so 150. now you can see it's rotated at this moment let's give it a try and see how our loft is working so we got base we got mid and we got top in sequence right and create a solid and hit ok so this is our flower base very simple right we can do that so like it's only one sketch and another offset place it like in a in two different elevation we get our flower base very simple what i did on this one i wanted to make it a little fat at the middle side like a belly and this is not that like in a mid fat so to speak what we can do is we can get in there this mid sketch we can actually update some parameters we can say this 100 will be 150 and this 100 will be 150 that kind of makes it a little wider in the at the belly level and then that makes our flower bass the way we want it it's not the exact parameters that i'm using from this but you get the idea so now what we'll have to do is i think our loft is good so i'm going to keep this right but make this sketches visible now i can go ahead and take this sketch copy it and paste it again and then say rename that so a lot of copying and pasting and then it's all Control c and Control b all right so on this one we will do the same thing we will take all the edges right take all of the edges and then come to offset and then inside it will be like i think we said minus three so that will be our offset all right now the painful thing is like select all of these and delete all right so we got our mid sketch now we can go ahead and make another loft so let's go ahead and re rename this loft as a loft out and we can go into lofting again and say now we are taking all the inside ones so it is important to actually name the sketches where you are working on these um, multiple sketches in lofting so base in all right we can see that we can pull it in and then we want to have the mid in there and then we want to have the top in there either way it has to be top to bottom or bottom to top in sequence and create solid and hit ok all right now we have 
two pieces so one is this is loft and say in right so there is loft out and there is loft in we have two bodies uh, one is thicker than the other now we can do a deduction deduction is called boolean um, in boolean operation in picket and so what we want to do we want to take this one and minus this one so we select that one first the one that we want to keep and the one that we want to deduct and come here it says cut so that's a boolean cut or you can go to part and go to boolean and cut i mean since it is here we'll just use it from there and that will cut things from inside will make it a hollow part now if you were working off a part design this part would be simpler we would not have to make this cut we would just uh, make two sketches like both inside and out at the same sketch and then we would we could do this lofting in it it is easier in part design i just wanted to have it in part so i didn't have to ex explain what other special things that we have to remember in part design workbench all right so we got our shell pretty simple now let's take a look at what else we did we have a bottom and we have an edge here so which is very simple to build in so let's say this is top this is bottom we can take so there is a sketch right and that sketch is loft base out there so that sketch we can take that and extrude which is like thickens it extrude that now remember when we were working we worked from this direction so anything we extrude will go that way we want to bring it downward so we'll say reversed and then along we will say since it is a base i'm going to make it a thicker one millimeter thicker and apply all right and so we get the base it was easy we didn't have to do any new sketching in there all right let's take a look and then we have an outer brim we can work on that one too now here i want to talk to you about it just a little bit just a tiny little bit advanced operation so we can do two ways we have this outer sketch we have this inner sketch so we can do extrusion on both of them and then make a cut just like we did here so that part you know like unless any if you don't know anything else you could work off that way or there is another way so you can select this whole thing and then extrude that entirely towards like you know the direction that i'm looking at now it cannot be done in part workbench it can be done from part design but the tool that works in part design also works within part workbench so what i will do i'll go to part design and then click on this button it is called create a sub object shape binder what it does is it just mimics the surface that we selected so although it is in part design it works equally effectively for both part design and part i'm going to go ahead and select so get this surface selected and hit sub object shape binder i have that on my shortcut list uh, either way i can do that and then go back to part workbench so this is what created for that operation and i'm going to say base thickness right and then i want to now this we can extrude it we can extrude it as if it was a sketch and then i want to say this is so we already have four millimeter and we want to make it a bit more so say eight or seven millimeter and obviously it will be reversed there what it does is oh okay so maybe we should have not selected the reversed so direction mode we can select so select the extrude and come here on the data tab it says reversed we want to make it false there we have that brim created now this looks a little transparent because anything we create of binder it's 
um, default by default it is a transparent option we can make that zero so it's a thicker we can even change the color of this part like the default one but let's not bother too much about color right at this moment so we have that this is the so let's rename that i gonna say this is the brim and this one we can we can make it um, view or hide by pressing space on the keyboard and this one i'm going to say this is bottom right and now if you'll notice let's hide this one both the bottom and the brim starts from the same surface so there are some overlaps which i'm, I'm just bringing this point up to you let's not worry too much about this overlap it does not matter if it is overlapping like that because we are going to merge them together anyway so i'm going to say this is base body so what i want to do i want to take all these three so this one this one and this one so you can select it from here by pressing the control key on your keyboard and left mouse click or just select it from the tree view because you named them accordingly you know which one is which one select all of those and then come here say union and so looks like it's gonna take a minute all right there it is so we have a complete flower base built in FreeCAD which was pretty simple I'm gonna say a uh, very simple object as a beginner in FreeCAD all right now we have a solid object now let's focus on how I wrote these names on here. So if you are wondering who's Jonathan and Alexandra, those are my co-workers. They are getting um, they are getting this gift. So in this example, I won't be using their name. I will be using something else. We want to draw something on this surface which is not linear, right? It is not a planar surface. None of these. And we want to draw something if it was like a plane like this we could actually make something up and then boolean uh, union it but this is not planar and we will be using a another tool from the curves workbench and that is called sketch on surface so to write anything we will be using sketch on surface if the surface is not planar so what i want to do i want to rename this as base uh, no name right and then select the surface that we want to work on and come here in the curved workbench and say sketch on surface nothing happened except that there is a new thing in here on the left it says sketch on surface if we expand that by clicking this drop down there is this mapped sketch and it's not visible you can take a look at it by so this is grayed out this is solid black so this is visible this is not visible let's make that visible by pressing space on space on the keyboard nothing happened so double click on it and we see that there is this boundary it's coming up with from that that so it what it does is like it takes the surface and makes that as a rectangle all right so it has its dimension on it but these lines are not showing up because they are construction geometry what i want to do i want to take these two lines or either of like the top or bottom or like two sides and convert them to solid lines now close it up and we can see that so this mapped sketch is right here anything we do on that sketch will be reflected on the surface that we selected so we have to do work on in this area and that work is writing a name and we can write the name from draft workbench the draft workbench comes default whereas if you didn't have curves workbench already installed you'd have to install the curves workbench to work on this 
and in the draft workbench there is this button looks like s it says shape from text so we click on there and here we want to keep this xyz at zero if you bring the mouse and the in the workspace that mouse changes these values come over here and say reset point and string it says default and that's what the writing the name would be so i'll like it's more like in the name i'm going to say by us uh, let's make that all capital Fires. if you're wondering who fire is he's my son and just know that this, there is a 10 millimeter height right there we'll have to update that and then for you if you're working on this um, first time you would have to select a font so i have that font selected what i did is all right let me show you this so i have the free cat folder and then there i kept this font so i would recommend you to do the same or like you can just go to your windows um, font directory and select a font so for this one i just downloaded a font and then kept it in this folder and then selected it first time it's remembering that location so select the font right and hit open and then again reset base point at zero 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 and hit ok all right where is that shape string oh it's right here i should probably hide this all right oh look at that there's this sketch on surface that it's showing but it's not we didn't know that because it's kind of right here anyway so there is fires and this is this em empty space that we want to fill in with this name obviously what we'll have to do is we'll have to do two things enlarge this and then rotate that so let's do the first thing first i want to rotate it so right click on it and transform brings out this axis cross and we want to rotate it just like that okay i have this rotation increment at 20 which is not matching up to 90 degrees so let's make that 15 and then now rotate it six times and then also bring it down somewhere here in the middle maybe pull it up here too and then let's try to enlarge this so select on the shape string and come to data tab there is this size 10 millimeter maybe we want to make it 50 yeah that sounds good uh you can make it 60. All right that's also better takes out more space let's keep it at 60. And then we want to transform it one more time trying to make it kind of centered we can adjust this location later on as well all right so we have the shape string built in there right and on the mapped sketch so let's hide this one on the mapped sketch it's still empty so we'll have to bring that shape string in the map sketch so we can do that by i think our work on map sketch is done so let's go ahead and hide this for now so let's go ahead and make that gn the construction geometry and there it is and now we can so hide this and then go to sketch on surface and come here and say extra objects from there I want to select this shape string maybe before i do that let's go ahead and say all right now it will be easy to find so we go to the sketch on surface and then extra objects and then select fires hit okay what it does is now this text is kind of reflected on this surface very simple now if you are asking so why we had to make these two lines solid first and then we bring it back to 
construction geometry because we wanted to have this name this fire's name positioned in the middle of between those two lines so between in the map sketch so let's make these two solid again so we wanted to have this name placed in the middle of these two lines and that's the only task this map sketch does unless you are actually drawing something in there what i mean by that is like if you want to go ahead and draw a circle right there it will also show up in here so if you want to draw something draw that between these two lines or if you're just writing the name add that name from extra objects All right let's go ahead and make this back to construction geometry and then delete that extra circle all right so now we have the name on the surface but notice so we don't need this hide that one for now notice how this is lines only it doesn't have anything in the in the middle and it's not generating any 3d effect like here it has a 3d effect it has indention in the inside so what we want to do is come here on sketch on surface in this data tab on say fill faces so it has to be sequentially so go ahead and make that true what it does is that actually fills the faces in between two lines all right and then come here on the offset so offset and thickness are two different things goes two different ways offset is like how far you want to push it so let's go ahead and make offset two what it does is now this this writing is detached from the surface it is still maintaining the curvature uh yes curvature or like in the surface profile but it's like detached by two millimeter because we said offset is two so if we want to take it downward maybe we want to put a minus in front of the value so now it's inside there it's there it's one millimeter down because we said minus one all right now with that let's go ahead and apply the thickness of two millimeter so what it did is it took it down one millimeter downward and then pulled it up as a 3d object so this thickness is two millimeter yes exactly so now we have this 3d name embedded one millimeter inside and it is pulling out one millimeter so if you want to 3d print it right now it will be you could fill it with your finger it's extruded one millimeter outside or you can make an indentation so you can uh, the depression we can make a depression by selecting this let's go to part workbench so we want to keep this and delete that and make a cut that will make a depression in there so it's a solid object now the name is depressed by one millimeter so if it's a three millimeter thick wall and you are having one millimeter depression you can still uh, print it out and then kind of fill it the name is there pretty cool huh so that's what i did on this flower base uh, i actually wrote my friend's name and in his going to be wife's name in there as a gift and then i actually i think i made this thickness four millimeter to make it a little sturdy and this in this indentation is about one millimeter two millimeter i guess let's take a look at it yes it's 0 0.70 millimeter not so not so deep all right i hope it was easy to understand for you how how to model a loft and use that principle to make a unique flower base and then kind of like coming up with your name on top and you can also play around with 
the angle that we built so base body and loft in or say in here remember we said 45 on the sketch in the placement we said 45 you can play around with that value uh, if it is anything less than 45 or like more than 45 notice how this thing changes in a different way so that you know if you are playing around with this i would recommend i would encourage you to actually play around with this value on both of these so on this both of these so maybe maybe what you can do is actually come in here and on the axis so on angle here you can make it a formula right so let me show you this so why we are doing this as i said i, I encourage you to play around with this angle value and then i want to i want you to make it the same angle on both of this so we can make it a formula if we change it in mid here it will be reflected in here as well so that's why we want to embed this formula right here all right so i'm going to say e and i'm going to say sketch all right make it sketch and this is a sketch mid out so we will go with that mid out dot so this is under placement so this value is under placement so i'm going to say placement right and and dot comes as a formal expression and then this is angle so we want to say angle and then the only angle comes up is a rotation angle so let's take that so it's 45 all right so now it's taking a second to update this now i want to actually i want you to play around with this with this angle value before you do this naming thing because this name is stuck to that surface and if you change that angle that surface will be changed so come here before you actually do with this naming thing i would i would encourage you to come here and then change this value to say 40 50 even 44 or 46 see how this pattern changes and and see if that makes sense uh, i'm here to explain that that different uh, changing of this body for anything any value other than 45 uh, so if you feel like you need explanation on that let me know in the comment section below i'll help you out with that if you wanted to download this model I am going to upload this in my own cell lens library right now so that way you can play around with this if you wanted to so address is lens.oncell.com and I'm going to go ahead and upload so this is my own cell li li library all the models that I've been building I'm uploading them here one by one um, so I want to continue that what it will do is it will create a, a mesh object for you all to preview even if you didn't want to open it up in FreeCAD software which is pretty good um, I like it there it is that is my object it also has the name I wonder where this this color came from probably from the from this shape binder that I built it was the same color because none of the other models had this color anyway that's not important so here is the shared link so this is the link that I will place in the video description and you can come to this model and then download this object if you want to or take a look at it and also take a look at my other models that I've been building um, over the time and download them as you wish this model i came up with about a week ago and because i don't have a 3d printer i uploaded this model to an online 3d printing service they printed it pretty quick and sent to me look at that so this is the flower that i modeled 
about a week ago and then I ordered it to 3d print and this name feels pretty good to actually so 0.70 millimeter thickness uh, indentation it's pretty clear it's so you can you can take a look at it and then you can clearly see it so it's not it's not that shallow so i'm going to say anything between 0.5 millimeter and 0.7 or like one millimeter indentation is a pretty good um thickness to visually look at it and then i modeled this in blender as a red color it came out really great so if you want to give it a try and then print it in different colors it will probably look better but i i like it i hope my friend will like it it's a gift to them uh, my friends i want to wrap it up here i hope this process was easy to understand and i did not go too fast if you have any questions on how to model this or like this idea if you want to use this idea to come up with your own flower vase and then if you have any questions in the way please let me know in the comment section below with that i want to thank you for watching this video and i hope to see you in one of my next videos stay safe